So these are the beliefs that I uncovered in my journey mm. that was keeping me stuck in, and, and it was after Martin passed away that I, that I did my inner journey. The beliefs that kept me stuck in my life was that I had to be perfect all the time and soldier on. Yeah. Perfect. How, if you imagine how that was holding me back, not just in my, my grief, but in my whole life. Oh. <laughs> I never give up. I never give up. I never give up. Turn around. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Neff Inspiration, my show on YouTube and as a podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. Today is another fantastic day. And I, I love it that my guests are coming from all over the world. But today is really a bit of a, of a freaky one. So I've got today with me Denise Dilvart. Now, Denise is a South African married to a Dutchman or previously married to a Dutchman living in Australia who is being interviewed by a German who is living in New Zealand. So there's going to be a test at the end, guys. So I hope you paid attention. <laughs> but it just shows how beautifully cosmopolitan we all are nowadays. And if we're cosmopolitan, it also means that we are actually getting used to breaking down boundaries, breaking down walls, breaking down taboo topics. And today is one of these taboo topics that so few people talk about until it's literally too late. And we are talking about grief and loss. It's a heavy duty subject. Uh, heavy, yeah, heavy duty is, I guess, the word. Uh, it's a heavy subject. It's, a, it's some, often a very sad subject. Having said that, both Denise and I have already figured out that we both have got uh, a rather dry and wicked sense of humor. Um, so, guys... <laughs> We show you maybe a different way how maybe we can look at death and look at grief and beyond and the journey that we all sooner or later will take because just as much as birth is part of life, death is part of life as well. So Denise, thank you so much for being a guest on my show and for helping me tackle this challenging topic tonight. You're so welcome, and thank you for hosting me. It's an absolute pleasure mm. to speak about grief and obviously to bring the lighter side of grief because grief is such a heavy energy. And, you know, um, when my husband died, everybody would say, oh, I'm so sorry. And I think, what are you sorry for? You didn't even know him. And <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <yeah. laughs> fair call. <laughs> Yeah, that was my immediate reaction because it was like, what are you sorry for? You mm. didn't know him, so... Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um and and that's because grief is as you said in the intro, grief is such a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. We don't speak about death and dying or grief. Mm -hmm. It's not one of anybody's favorite subjects to talk about, except mine. <laughs> And okay, favorite subject, you could think that's a bit morbid, but at the same token, it is one of these journeys where we transform, where we are suddenly finding ourselves in a situation that we are not used to. And there are uh, stages of grief, if you now believe in them or not, where you, where you, where you sort of change, where you transform. And Many of us transform to the better. Some of us get stuck in that transformation. For them, it is living hell. Um, my goodness. And I think there's certainly something to be said here, because certainly in the Western societies, it is no longer normal to die. Um, doctors are doing amazing things. I'm proud of my profession here. But at the same token, often enough, therefore, death is transplanted from the home, and from an environment where it is normalized or can be normalized towards a tubes and belts and whistles and rings and then a flat line somewhere in a hospital where only a few people, if at all, are seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree that, that this Absolutely. is a, a worldwide issue? It's a total worldwide issue. You know, um, grief is natural. We're all born and we're all going to die. When we're going to die, we don't know, you know. But that, that day is coming. It's coming for me. It's coming for you. It's coming for everybody. But we're not taught in society how to celebrate death, how to celebrate the life of that person. 
we celebrate the birth of a baby. Yay, you had a baby. Oh, congratulations. But when somebody dies, it's mm. like this morbid thing that, oh, my goodness, they're gone. What are we going to do? Instead of focusing on that on that life that they had with, with, with you, that, that absolute amazing time. Mm. And as you said, you know, where's the gift in grief? Because we can choose to, to, to die with the person that died. Or we can choose to transform that grief into a gift. What is the gift? Mm. Having said that, I mean, this is this is the beautiful black and white picture of death and of a relationship with a so-called loved one. But if we are now looking at uh, the, the harsh numbers of what is going on in our society, in Western society, you've got sexual abuse in women one in three you've got childhood sexual abuse and physical abuse and emotional abuse where there are very toxic relationships playing out mm -hmm. uh, often from one generation to the other um and uh, grief there's on the one hand this kind of yeah the loving relationship but then they're often such toxic relationship after all 50 percent of or more of of marriages end up on the rocks in divorce talk yeah. about talk about challenging relationships and now you throw death in the middle when people couldn't even get their act together in the in the living and yeah. now they are supposed to be somehow grieving of this loved one well was he a loved one or who was i my god you i can you can you see the turmoil already building oh, there i've been doing this work now for 15 years mm. um I, after I lost my husband, I looked for help. I wanted, I want, I wanted to heal me, not my, not the grief, because grief is love. It's an emotion. And when I started working with widows, I was horrified how many of them discovered after their husband had died, mm. the affairs he was having. <laughs> the, it was, it was horrific. It was like you know, I have, I have to heal myself. How am I going to heal? I had one lady that was two weeks into her journey. And she contacted me and says, I, I, can't, I have to grieve. I can't grieve for him because I discovered all the credit cards he'd spent on this, on this lover that he had, and he left her with no money. My point. My point. <laughs> so, <laughs> bloody hell. Um, you, could, you could argue, well, these are extreme uh, examples. Well, unfortunately, they're not. They're, they're not. not. No, another client, husband, husband, Went on a business trip. They owned a travel agency, so he was always traveling from the U.S. to Thailand. And she didn't think anything of it. He went to Thailand. He didn't come back. He actually disappeared. They looked for him. They, he then committed suicide. They discovered he committed suicide. But then she discovered that he had a whole family in Thailand. She didn't know about. <laughs> okay, so accepting that. There are no holy saints walking this earth and that every single one of us has got uh, skeletons in the cupboard, some yes. more than others. Um, how, I mean, first of all, when you got thrown suddenly in the middle, mm -hmm. when you got thrown into the deep end, shall I say, um, how old were you, Maya? I was 51. 51? Yeah. And the death of your husband was sudden? Totally. Blood clot. Total blood clot. He, mm. he went to work. Um, I still say he shouldn't have died. He was in hospital and he was on warfarin as a doctor. You know all that stuff. And But he died. He died of a blood clot. Mm. So I wasn't with him. Mm. I was at home. I was eight hours away, actually, because he was down in Brisbane. We were living up north. And... The guilt that I felt because I wasn't with him. If only I could have, I should have, maybe I could have seen, I could have told the doctors that he would, that, that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I had people say to me, oh, see the hospital, see the hospital. And I thought, why? These people are human beings. He, it was his time. It was his time to go. Mm -hmm. and which, is a, which is a really beautiful, beautiful acceptance thing to say but of course you have got so many situations where maybe there was 
an estranged family member who has got his or her own guilt for not having seen dad or granddad um, for I don't know how long, um, for whatever reasons, and suddenly dad is in intensive care, and yeah. suddenly this person will, you know, over try to overcome the guilt by really ripping into nursing staff and doctors. Mm -hmm. You can tell that I've been in the, on the receiving end of such yes. situations before. I can imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> and it is so hard. And that's what I mean. We are talking about grief as a, this kind of simple thing in a bubble. And it never is. Never it never is. is. No. It never is. You know, it's like the five stages of grief. Hmm. Every therapist, every doctor around, nurse, everybody is taught these are the five stages of grief. Mm. And they're not. There are no stages of grief. <laughs> they're not linear. You can't go no, no, through. No. You just cannot. You know, yeah. I rem when I saw my psychologist, I'd never seen a psychologist or therapist or anybody in my life, but um, when Martin died, I was losing my brain. I was. I didn't realize that that's normal, that when you lose somebody to, to have brain fog, and that's even a word for it called widow fog. I didn't know that, you know? So Me neither. Yeah, it's called widow fog, widow fog. Okay. So, you know, it's, 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 it's normal. And I had lost my keys. I was apparently repeating myself. My kids said to me, my daughter said to me, Mom, you're getting Alzheimer's. Mm. you need to go and see the doctor, which I did, beautiful South African doctor. And she said to me, Denise, you've got to go and see a psychologist. You've got to speak to somebody. And I sat there and I spoke to her and I spoke to her and I spoke to her. And I realized after about six months, I said to her, when am I going to start feeling better? And she sort of looked at me and she said, you've just lost your husband. She said, this is going to take five to seven years because you have to go through the stages of grief. And you have to wait for time. And that was my trigger because I knew I didn't want it. Martin wouldn't have wanted it. I mean, he was, he was a Hollander Dutchman with a wicked sense of humor as well. I can hear him saying up there, what are you doing? Just move on. Just move forward. You can't sit and cry for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I have never met Martin, but I can just see him in front of me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that was my turning point when I realized I need to heal me. I need to live. I need mm. to live his legacy. But then again, I love it that you actually uh, were accepting or learning to accept the hard way, I guess, um, that you have to go through a period where you're not your best, where you're not the best version of yourself. Absolutely. Okay. We have to feel, you know, that's the first letter in my flow method is feel. For mm. goodness sake, people feel your pain. I see it all the time with my clients. Oh, they're so busy. They're so busy. They're building, they're renovating, they, they're doing something. Or for a lot of widows, I want another man. I need another man in my yeah. life. I've got this emptiness. Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't. You need to find yourself. You Correct. need to find out who you are first. Correct. Yeah. But Denise, our whole society is built upon immediate, instant satisfaction. Yes. Instant right now. And if I can't have it right now, then I want it yesterday. That's and right. if I if if it is if it is not feeling good, then I need to immediately do something to distract myself yes. or escape my reality. Yeah. Let's drink, eat, smoke, oh. uh, use any kind of tablet they can get your fingers on, make love to everything that has a heartbeat, um, yeah. whatever your voice is. But that is that is nowadays the society. So has it not become even more difficult for us to successfully grieve? Totally. If that is if that is if that is uh, even a, a proper way of putting it, yeah. of of actually growing from trauma, we, the gift is in the growth that you get from the trauma. Now we have a choice, and you know, some people when I say we have a choice, they go, "No, I didn't. I didn't choose this. No, mm. you didn't choose the death. You didn't choose that. But we now have a choice of how we're going to move forward." You know, I remember. Um, <laughs> Um, after Martin passed away, I I love shoes. That's something I love is shoes. And I started buying shoes. 
fair. Okay. Uh, I... About an addiction to shoes. I would go out shopping because I would feel this, oh, I need to go out. I can't sit in this house by myself. I need to go out. I need to go. I need to do. And I'd get in the car and I'd go to I'd go to the shopping center. And I'd say, well, I'm feeling fat today. I don't want to buy clothes. I don't feel like trying on clothes. Oh, you can never have a bad shoe day. That was my motto. You can never have a bad shoe day. <laughs> Were you aware that it was an escape for you? Were yeah. you? Yes. And I would buy shoes and then I would buy, I would see a pair and I'd say, oh, I love that. Gee, but look, it comes in green and red and blue and yellow and orange. I couldn't decide what color to get, so I'd buy them all. <laughs> Priceless. Buy, buy, or one in each color. <laughs> Imelda, <laughs> Marcus, move aside. <laughs> I was basically called that, you know, uh, my kids walked into the bedroom one day and they said, Mom, and all, they were all still in their boxes, not worn. But that's an addiction, isn't it? I mean, that, that's what we do to escape. <laughs> Beck, oh, it's, it's beautiful. You could have chosen so many other addictions. I think shoes... I think you get away with that. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. But I mean, the, now you're laughing about it. I mean, uh, when you're in that situation, for many women, it is absolutely chaotic. And and, and not just women. I mean, it, it so happens to be that you're identifying as a woman and I as a man. Yes. Therefore, we have got the typical roles. But I mean, the it is... Uh, often enough, the other way around as well. I'm at the moment going through a divorce and my wife, whilst I was bringing the money in, she was dealing with all the, the things like insurances, etc. Mm -hmm. So um, she, there was, now that we are separating, I feel at times like, like a real Dumbo because mm -hmm. I have no clue what yeah. insurance is where and who is what, etc. So there is this very practical um practical feeling lost uh i mean uh, how did that happen for you well i was i was lucky and i say i was lucky is because martin and i always ran a business together he was an auto electrician so he was a hands-on tradie yeah tradesman i was the one who was the bookkeeper the one in the background that was running the business so okay. i ran and handled all the money and the and Good. everything yeah um, so when he died, it was just a smooth, okay, I need to, this is what I need to do. I knew where everything was. But sitting and having a barbecue with my kids one night and my son said to me, gosh, we so you're so lucky that dad, that dad didn't, that you didn't die before dad. I said, why? He said, we're all lucky. He said, because dad wouldn't have even known the password of anything. I said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It sounds like such a cliche, but... Yes. <laughs> we yes. all are uh, relationships often and are yin and yang and probably should be yin and yang. Yes. So there is not, inevitably there is a sort of a, a division of, of jobs, tasks, responsibilities, which yes. when it works well, is a beautifully uh, working together couple. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to know absolutely everything uh, in a relationship, but at the same token, if then suddenly, boom, everything yeah. changes yeah. that can be catastrophic and, and really confusing yeah and you know i see it especially with the older widows oh. you know that their husband they've never worked their husband's taken care of everything yeah and suddenly they are thrust into this world of lawyers estates winding everything up where do i go what do i do and the overwhelm for them yeah is tremendous and they're still trying to deal with their grief as well Exactly. Oh, so they're not thinking clearly. They're not. They're not taking the right decisions. Mm. Um, and then people say, "Oh, just wait for time and do nothing." Mm. And then they sit there going, "Well, I can't wait for time. You've got to take action. Mm. You have to take action. You have to. You have to make start making decisions. You have to start thinking clearly. And the mm. only way you can do that is to is to change the story that we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful." But then again, let's, I mean, <laughs> I can't just see myself in such a situation um, completely compartmentalizing. I think it would be easy for me as a doctor for the first 24, 48 hours, I would be in auto mode. 
uh, would okay. do complete emotions completely compartmentalized over there. I wouldn't even feel anything. I would do exactly what is needed to do because that's what I do in my job. Yeah. But then sooner or later, the emotions hit you. Sooner or later, you can no longer run, run away from it by being busy. Um, sooner or later, you're lying in bed and you're physically exhausted yet your mind is yeah. raising and you're you're confused and i think it's so important your first uh statement the the f the f in 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 flow the feel yeah. actually accepting that now is going to be a brutal time and a hard time for yeah. anyone and everyone who is in that situation yeah, and it doesn't matter who you've lost you know um one of my, because um, I now train um, other people that have gone through grief as well, how to do what I'm doing to become certified flow transformational grief coaches. And I've got a beautiful lady that um, she lost her daughter. She actually um, adopted this, this, this girl from Africa when she was a baby. Hmm. And um, this the little, she, she, was, she was a teenager, she was away at school, and she died away at school. The school, it was neglect. They didn't call medical help in time. Oh, so that right. all came out after after this, this child died. But for her, the mother, the guilt, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. She brought, the, you know, she brought this, this teenage, now teenage daughter out from Africa, out of poverty, and then she lets her die at school. So... Mm -hmm. The guilt and the and the, the the moving forward, but she was also one that she didn't want her her daughter, who is Naomi, and she won't mind me mentioning her name. Naomi, she didn't want Naomi's death to be in vain mm. and to mean nothing. And she's now helping others heal, other parents, mm. and, and realize I'm, that. I mean, this is beautiful to hear that transformation, and yeah. that is that is what you facilitate and allow others maybe to more speedily go through rather than having to reinvent the wheel and and suffer unnecessarily yeah. in addition to all the, the the suffering that is normal or normal you know that is that is inevitable let's put it like that yeah. um but i mean let's take take naomi's case how long was the journey she is now she has gone from victim to survivor to thriver but I mean, this, I guess this would have been, what, two years? Easy? So, no, so she started working with me when Naomi was about three months after Naomi's passing. Yeah. yeah. And um, I worked really hard with her too because remember with a, pet, with a child that dies, the whole family suffers. Everybody in that family is grieving. So if the mother is falling apart, the husband falls apart, all the other kids fall apart, it's just, it just is. Yeah. So it's been about two, three years now and exactly. um, since since Naomi's passing, but she's grown so much as a person in those three years. Absolutely. But yeah. I mean, but I, I want to point that out. That's three years. In nowadays, instant satisfaction. Let's put a filter onto uh, Instagram and make it look good. You know, it doesn't work like that. No. This is, you need time and you need time, not, not in, in analysis paralysis, but simply no. of healing because healing comes in layers. And total la oh, total, total, total mm. layers. Now, I, you know, I've got an eight week program, which is a, the flow grief release program, which is eight weeks and I work one on one. We work one on one. We help you through. But that's just the beginning of your journey. Mm. It's not the end. Mm. <laughs> You know, you're not going to suddenly go, oh, eight weeks' time, look at me, I'm, I'm okay, because it doesn't, doesn't work that way. Yeah. We wish, but no, 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 no. It's just the beginning. That's phase one. That's phase one. When you're starting to do the inner work and you're starting to say, well, who am I? Because I think that's the biggest thing. And, and even with you going through the divorce now, you know, it's like, well, who am I? Totally, totally. Yeah, who and, am I now? You know? And, and I mean, I mean, my divorce, I mean, we're talking now easy six months and, um, and probably building up to it a year easy. Um, the last six months were brutal. And I'm only now finding myself again or 
figuring out who I want to be when I grow up. Um, yeah. And but that is a it's an opportunity now. But the, the, certainly, if you had asked me four months ago or five months ago, oh, I was in a very very dark place, and that's normal. You have to and, be in that dark place because if you don't go down in that dark into that <laughs> dark place. How are you going to know light? How are you going to know where you're going to? <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I had more trauma than I care to admit. Okay. So <laughs> my my own psychologist is, or my own counselor is telling me, hey, look, you know, this it's all quite nice, this post-traumatic growth. But why don't you try growing by joy or try, try growing through other things, not through more trauma? <laughs> and I agreed with her. I should try that one day. <laughs> But but we can't we can't say no to the to the universe and say no sorry I don't like death uh, I, not now it is really not not suits me right now I'm I'm sorry I don't have time it doesn't work like that it, it, it just, really it's... doesn't you know <laughs> I'm I'm an only child um, got married young I mean my husband and Martin and I we had a great marriage but you know what it was, it was ups and downs as well we basically grew up together you know it wasn't one of those. La, 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 angel things and you know we, we I left him he left me you know it was just a normal relationship what can I say <laughs> <laughs> oh dear you know? okay so when he died I had nobody I had I'm living in Australia mm. I'm not close to my family in South Africa the cousins and and all of that both my parents had passed away and here I am on my own my kids had by that time moved out I was in eight acres by myself I had a choice. I could have said, well, oh, I'm so, so, I'm a widow. Oh, what am I going to do? Or I could say, well, hang on, Hmm. let's move forward. But I had to go down into that deep. But the the night that broke me, because in my previous life, I was, and I always say my previous life, I was a bookkeeper, tax agent to small business. That's what I did. Hmm. And I had seen a client, obviously, They didn't know my circumstances. You don't tell your clients, you know, hey, my husband's just died. Mm. Um, She was a new client, got to the house, and there was just rubbish everywhere. There was baby nappies on the table. She cleared that for me to work, and I thought, oh, I can't face this today. Got home, and I opened up the fridge. I was still in my corporate because I used to dress very corporate, very professional. I had my little logo, the whole lot. (laughs) opened up the fridge and there was a box of wine that my neighbour had left. Not a bottle, a box. And I thought, "Mm, I'll just have one glass. That'll that'll settle me down. (laughs) 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 But somewhere around the 14th class, you remembered, no, there's mm." There's nothing left in this box. Do I blow it up to get the last little bit out (laughs) of it? Well, a good alcoholic would, <laughs> but <laughs> but then again, I mean, was wine part of you? Was was uh, was? Did you and your husband enjoy a glass of wine every night? Or yeah, yeah. So he used to have his beer. You know, we'd sit out by the pool, and 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 uh, after the day, we he would have a beer, and I would have a wine, and we would just nice. unwind and talk about. So that was part of me that was missing too, and I thought, and I, I always had this belief that. You never drink alone. You've got to have somebody to drink with because you don't drink alone. You know, it's unsociable. You don't, alcoholics drink alone. I'm not an alcoholic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'll I'll take your word for it for the moment. (laughs) But no, I mean, it. it, it, but there you are. And, and, And it just shows because there are all these rituals, all these beautiful habits that are part and parcel often of a, of a, uh, of an effective relationship of a beautiful relationship yeah. and suddenly all these little things are reminding you of the past yeah and are like forms in your sight oh total yeah. total and you know the frustration and the anger that comes out and the blame and the amount of times i looked up in the heavens and said why did you die you know choice four letter words you left mm. me here you chose to go you know <laughs> But I mean, I'm I'm still a tiny little bit confused because at one side you say that the classic five stages of grief you don't believe in yet. Um, there was, I'm sure, at some stage there was denial, there was anger, there was um, the, this kind of. You do, but why I say I don't believe in them is that I have seen so many of of my clients try and navigate them 
religiously. Right. Okay. I'm um when when am I gonna get to the next stage? But I didn't feel angry. Does this is, is there something wrong with me? Oh, I see. So mm. I don't use that use them at all whatever stage you're in you're in that stage whether you are angry frustrated mm. it's a normal human reaction isn't it mm. to anything mm -hmm. absolutely so when we try and box it up and say well this is the formula a mm. lot of people try and follow that formula sure and there is no formula grief sure. is all over sure. grief is all over and also we have to to admit that most of us unless we have gone through trauma previously and have actually started exploring our own psyche, our own underlying core beliefs, etc. Mm -hmm. If you just have lived your life busily, um, there is a lot of screwed up stuff going in your own mind, leave oh. alone then the, the grief. So you have actually got this kind of, uh, this kind of emotions hitting you on the one side, you might be um, very prone to anger because you have had, you feel that that you know life has given you more lemons than lemonade, and that you're actually, you know, there's a lot of resentment, anger in your life. Well, if you're coming from that baseline, um, then no surprise, your your journey through those supposed, you know, stage wise uh, growth of of grief will be rather, rather different than maybe someone else who has a very, very accepting attitude towards mm -hmm. life. Um, hmm. Tricky. It tricky, is very tricky. Tri it is very tricky. And um, that's why I don't, I don't advocate or say, you know, these are, this is, this is the formula because there is no formula. Mm. How I work with my clients is, on an inner journey, let's mm. rediscover, let's reimagine your life. Mm. Who are you? What are your core beliefs? Uh, what are your strategies? What are your programs? Mm. Because grief puts a magnifying glass over our life, who we are, what we believe, because it mm. rocks us to the core. It's got this Second. magnifying glass over us. Yeah. And all of a sudden we go, well, I believe this and I believe that, whatever it is. But is that belief true? Is that your belief? Nice. Nice. Or if since we, we are no longer used to dying, you sort of think back, okay, what was the last film I've seen? And then what's the Hollywood, Hollywood version of how do I have to behave as a widow or as a widower? Um, and it's just bizarre what sometimes the beliefs yeah. that sometimes come out, is it not? Yeah, we watch we watch a Hallmark movie video, and we watch somebody die, and then we watch this widow, a widow or widow crying and upset, and oh my goodness, their life has fallen apart, and then they miraculously meet somebody and they live happily ever after. That's <laughs> All the within fifteen that's, minutes, yeah, that's right, yeah, right. It, that's the movie <laughs> that doesn't work in life because you have to, you have to process that grief you have to process it now when we process and you would know this more than anybody else if we don't release that those emotions mm. every cell in our body feels them mm. and they react to it mm. and that's why people get sick or if they are sick i've had a lot of ladies that say oh you know i've got um I've, I've, my cancer's come back and i'm, well, I'm not surprised mm. because you're holding on to all that anger all that hurt all yep. that all those emotions oh yeah so let them go yeah and that's the l in the flow so we feel it then we let it go we don't let go of the memories mm. it's all that angst that hurt we're holding on to mm. but for that it, it it takes some work it takes work to really stepwise to sort of move through and, and most of us if you if you are not taught or if you're not guided through such a process you don't know what to do because yeah. thoughts in their own way are just nebulous things that are floating around over there most of us if you were not to actually verbalize them speak them out or even better journal them write them down only once they they you put them into words do these emotions become real do these feelings come out 
Yeah, and it's yeah. it's certainly a, a beautiful journey. I mean, how much does does that play a role in the way you guide your? Oh, it's clients. huge. It's huge. And that that's the flow method in a nutshell. You know, we yeah. have to feel. Now, unfortunately, we get in our own way. We cannot move beyond who we are or what our thought patterns are or what our beliefs are. Yeah. So how I help and, and how, I've, my, uh, you know, we work with you is, we, okay, what are you feeling? Where is that feeling? Yeah. Where did it come from? And it's all these questions about, okay, so you're feeling sad. Why are you feeling sad? What triggered it? There's always a trigger. And it's going beneath that trigger. And it's amazing what comes out. You know, that 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 they were um, abused as a child or something. To it, it goes way back. It's not just, oh, yeah, I'm feeling sad today. That's not feeling an emotion. <laughs> mm. But the problem is, and you so rightly said it, is we cannot do this on our own mm. because we get in our own way. We can't move beyond who we are mm. by ourselves. We need somebody to sometimes actually pull us through. Mm. And that's my job is, is, is to pull you through those mm. emotions, to, to put, say, hey, come on, let's get, we've got, you've got this. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's not that easy. You don't want to. A lot of people don't want to. A lot of people just say, no, I'll be fine. No, you're not. Come on, let's do this. Let's do That's my job. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> and I think that's that's it's so important because um if you are with someone who um you love and who knows you like a friend or another family member that's all very nice that you've got that family support but at the same token the, uh, these people for them it's it's they are probably just as much at the same stage uh, or at the same starting point of their journey which might be as convoluted and as as confused as yours is. So therefore, it's one thing to have family members or friends who are just there to for you to cry, a uh, shoulder to cry on. But it is another thing to actually have someone who listens to what you're saying and who is also listening to what you're not saying. It's, and who is, yeah. And therefore, you don't know what you don't know. I yeah. guess that is that is the key thing. And I yeah. think that's that's so much when it comes to recovery from any mental health condition, yeah. when it comes to any, for any traumatic loss and grief. Um, yeah. There is so much that we don't know. Yeah. And Absolutely. I'm mm -hmm. I'm so pleased that there are people like you out there who are willing to be that person. Because normally, I mean, you are, <laughs> I compare you with a soldier who's running towards the gunfire. Normally, if there is death, people run a mile uh, the other way because they certainly don't want to be involved because that would mean that they have to feel, yeah. that they have to grieve, that they have to accept. Yeah. And guilty as charged, I handled the death of my parents not very well at all. Yeah. And with hindsight, and that has multiple reasons. Um, many of them we have already alluded to. Uh, they were maybe not such nice people. No. Yeah. Tick. Um, there were a lot of, uh, there was guilt. Tick. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, you name it, it was there. Tick, 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 tick. Um, so maybe it was not so, so surprising that I tried to escape my reality uh, with a lot of alcohol. Um, that didn't end well. Um, so you could argue that in many of us, we have tried maybe not such successful coping mechanisms in the past, and that therefore we were not successful in the past. So you've got this simmering kind of underlying unresolved grief yes. that is there. And now suddenly, boom, acute on chronic brief, brilliant, not brief, grief. Um, yeah. is that not a yeah. common scenario? Yeah. Very common, very common, because we bury our emotions. It's a human nature. What do we do? Mm. I'm fine. I'm okay. You know, my mother always used to say to me, Denise, just soldier on, just soldier on. <laughs> that was that was her favorite. You know, I said, mommy, I'm feeling that as a kid. Just soldier on. You'll be okay. And um, I, being an only child as well, I had to be perfect in everything. 
I did. I it was. I went to ballet, and I had to be. I had to practice till you know, because practice makes you know makes perfection. You know, but you just practice till it's mm. perfect. So these are the beliefs that I uncovered in my journey mm. that was keeping me stuck in, and and it was after Martin passed away that I, that I did my inner journey. The beliefs that kept me stuck in my life was that I had to be perfect all the time and soldier on. Yeah. Perfect. How? If you imagine how that how was holding me back, not just in my my grief, but in my whole life. Oh, <laughs> so true. Because I wouldn't do anything until it was perfect. That's why I became a bookkeeper. I used to go, oh, my God, but balances. Oh, and if I was one cent out, it wasn't perfect. I had to find that one cent. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, yeah, I bet you you were also a people pleaser. I bet total. you you were. <laughs> <laughs> you were always there for others and put Probably. yourself last. All the time. Guilty as charged. <laughs> exactly. <Guilty> as charged. <laughs> please, please. I, I can read you like an open book. Okay. <laughs> because I think we two are a bit peace in a pot kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, there is there is certain there are certain commonalities um yeah. in, in our journeys. And yeah. I have to say that. Many of things that you said, I, I want to say, yep, 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 like a like a like a broken record. Um, <laughs> broken record. You know, when when Martin died, I I, I literally soldiered on. I didn't stop. Mm. Um, I had three kids and eight, yeah, eight grandsons at the time, and I I had to be I had to be the strong one. I had to be the the, the martyr of family. You know, oh, you know, I've got this. You know, yes, your dad just died. He was 55. He suddenly dropped dead of a, of a blood clot, but that's okay. I've got this. I'm okay. But how are you? Mm. And mm. I see so many people do that, male, female, anything. You know, they, they, mm. they, they become the protectors. We want to help. We want to protect. <laughs> and guess what? We're not God. We can't do that. <laughs> no, but it's much easier. Come on, Denise. It's much easier to to help someone else because therefore you don't have to feel. You That's can right. focus on on someone else. And we yeah. see that again and again and again. A very broken people are trying to help others. And yeah, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't end up so well mm -hmm. um, because the broken people, unfortunately, will are are stuck in that. They don't allow themselves to heal um, because they are they're still escaping. In this case, right. just by being so busy or focusing on the suffering of others. That's right. That's right. And that's why with the the Flow Academy, that, that to, to where I teach others, there's three phases to that. The first phase is my eight week grief healing program, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter where you are in your grief journey, how long it's been, it's immaterial. You do that first mm -hmm. because that's your inner journey. Now you're ready to help others. Because if you don't do that first, you're not ready to help others. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. So you call it the flow. And yeah. I think it's an acronym, isn't it? So we, yes. we, we did the first one that was the feel. Yeah. Then the let go L. Yeah. What is the what the is the O other? is to overcome. Now, when you when you when you because you open the floodgates, when you start mm. feeling and letting go of that pain. Now you, now you can start. Now it's just at the beginning of the journey of starting to overcome. What do you need to overcome? Mm. That's when your mind opens and you can go, well, you know, I want to, I, I want to travel or I want to move countries or I want to, you, you see, you start seeing your vision. Mm. And then it's a journey into reimagining your new life. Mm. Then you become whole. You become a whole feeling person again because you reimagined your new life, which continues because life happens. Life lifes, as they say. <laughs> you don't suddenly, pick, you know, have this mm. violin of angels going, well, you've arrived because you never arrive. This is just the beginning of your new journey. And is it is a gift. Now, it sounds so corny, but it is a true gift to have that trauma sandwich offered to you and you're forced to eat it because ultimately it is such a unique opportunity to, to get off the hamster wheel yourself and actually stop, feel, deal with it and, and grow from it. Yeah. And it sounds like a cliche, but it is what happens. 
it is it's, what happens when we, when we do it successfully when we do it uh when we allow connection when yeah. we allow others to come in to guide us in that journey and maybe give us a uh give us hope yeah. and maybe give us help to start off with yeah. um but it is you need you need that glimmer of hope that because it is a very dark place when I mean, you oh. had the dark night of the soul there and you probably I was going to say you took the words out of my mouth I was going to say it's we, it's the dark night of the soul it really yeah. is mm. and um, because grief is trauma mm. and society doesn't recognize it as trauma mm. they really don't they see it as oh well you just lost somebody just get over it and get on with your life mm. and People feel guilty. People that have, that are grieving feel guilty for showing their emotions, for actually mm. saying to somebody, "I'm having a, a lousy day today." Mm. You know, they we wear, we all wear a mask. We put on our "I'm okay" mask. How are you? I'm okay. I'm wonderful. Meantime, you're dying inside. You know? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. <laughs> But I mean that is that is the 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 free masks or the free states, the free persons we are. There's this this outside person that you show at work and to everyone out there. Um, then there is sort of the the more private person, which maybe ah, half a dozen, maybe a dozen people know. And then there's the very secret inner person that um you keep hidden away often yeah. from your husband from your wife from from everyone so there's a very distinct people living within you or you which you portray outside and i think that the problem is in 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 relationships um or certainly at grief sometimes the, the, yeah <laughs> different people come out and, and the facts come out. We, we spoke about that earlier mm -hmm. and it makes it hard. But at the same token, um, this is the reality. This is, we are, we, we want everything sugarcoated nowadays. And unfortunately that's not life. No. Life is brutal. Life is blood gore, brain fluid flowing, um, I sound like a day at work here. Um, <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> no. I see. But what I'm doing here is I'm using humor to de decompress. And totally. I guess I'm, I do exactly the same. Because if we don't laugh, yeah. And you know, I see so many people walking around like, like especially after COVID and everything, oh, the world's in doom and gloom, and this is mm. gonna it's like goodness me stop focusing on that just laugh just see mm. the funny side of it mm. we have to see the funny side of life you we need a sense of humor if we don't have a sense of humor oh my goodness we're a very <laughs> sad people <laughs> so do you think that the, the grief process in those societies where um death is actually celebrated um that it is a bit easier there or do you think that that essentially uh, people there are just having different rituals? Let's say the Irish who are getting plastered um, uh, to celebrate the life of someone. Or let's say I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, up to scratch. So please forgive me, guys mm -hmm. out there um, in Hinduism, in Buddhism. I, I don't know the, the exact what is actually happening after death or, or in the in the grieving process, so to speak. Um, do you think there are that these are better ways how to cope, or these are just they have they, their own unique set of problems? They're just a coping. It doesn't, you know, we, they're all human. We're all human, regardless of the ritual, regardless of the religion. Um, mm. We all feel those emotions. We all feel that loss. Now, you know, I know in South Africa, the Africans, when, so, when somebody dies, they wail. They wail and they wail mm. for so many days. I forget how many days now they wail. Mm. And then when the wailing's finished and that grief period supposedly to, is over. Um, but I've seen even with, 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 with them as well, you know, there's sorrow and the sorrow is, is, the, is the emptiness. It's that loneliness. It's that, that, that the physical. And even if you believe in life after death and you believe that they're still with you, or whatever mm. your belief is, it is. It's, it is what it is. Mm. It's, it's still that physical 
having that person there, that physical being mm -hmm. that's no longer there. Absolutely. No, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, Denise, you're an amazing woman that you bring such a passion to the table uh, when it comes to such a a difficult subject for mm -hmm. many people and difficult only because most of us are not even talking about it. Most of us, you know, you're lucky. I don't know how many percent in, in New Zealand, for example, have got um, donor cards, organ donation. Um, many people don't even think about that, even yeah. if they are forced to um, by, by law in some countries. Um, people don't want to think about it, don't want to talk about it, don't want to, no, 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 no. Yeah. too hard to, to to even consider i don't yeah. know how many people actually have got a will um i would be surprised if that is more than 10 15 20 percent in your experience uh, absolutely i always say there's two taboo subjects that people never talk about and that's grief and sex <laughs> yet 12 percent <laughs> of the internet is porn so yeah, yeah. exactly but, uh, we don't, but we don't talk about that because yeah. oh that's it's a bit oh oh no shh, don't mm. tell anybody exactly and it, and it's the same with death and dying mm. um and yet we're all going to die we're all going to one day die regardless of whether we we die naturally at, at, at 105 or whether mm. we die as a baby that's just been born it doesn't mm. matter mm. Death is a natural part of life. Mm. And my mission is really to not to to to, to normalize it, to, to say to people, it's okay, you're okay, mm. and you're going to be okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, Denise, uh, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. If people want to know more about you, where can they go to find you? Where can they they look you up? So I've got my uh, my website, which I think is probably the best place to to go to, which is flowgriefacademy.com. Mm -hmm. um, I've got all the links on there. I've got um, videos that can watch on there. I've got um, a, a training as well, mm -hmm. uh, a presentation that they can they can join and um, go through that. Because my philosophy with grief is that and and loss is that yes, and because I've been through it myself, I'm not just trained in it. I've walked the walk, I've talked the talk, I know what it takes and I know the mindset that mm. it takes to yeah. actually really reimagine your life. You can't just wake up tomorrow and go, well, today today I'm going to just be grief-free. It doesn't work <laughs> that way. Unfortunately, I wish it did. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with my emotions, leave alone the grief. It's just normal that, that you need to... How shall I say that? It's irrespective of the trauma that is happening in your life. You need to learn how to feel. You need okay. to learn to accept that there are days which are just not your day. And yeah. end of the story. And then especially when it comes to grief or when it comes to, to trauma, mm -hmm. give yourself the the compassion give yourself the love to actually take time yeah. and acknowledge what is what is what is happening in you that's right do you know that after it's 15 years may the fourth will be 15 years since martin passed away and um i still get triggered mm. and i still have bad days every now not a bad day but bad moments where i go oh my god oh I feel that emptiness mm. But because I've done so much inner work on myself and I know I can pull myself out of it quickly. I yes, don't yes. go down and unpack and live there. I yes, had yes. a I had a client who was 15 years, she had lost her husband. Our first call, she couldn't talk. She was just crying and crying and crying. I couldn't imagine living my life crying every day. Yes, there's moments, there's moments where I have go, oh, you know, this is this is but it is what it is. And it's just pulling myself out, knowing what to do, having the tools mm. to be able to do that. And there's a difference between being able to change your state uh, from running away from an emotion. Okay, there is, there's a time and place for both. Yes. Um, and I think, again, this is an emotional 
intelligence that you need to develop to actually know when it is okay to remain in a pity party state. And with yes. that, I, I don't want to put it negative, but it's an, it's a nice, you know, you feel really sorry for yourself. And sometimes, and is, sometimes you need, yeah, you need to curl up in a ball and, and, yeah. and just, yeah, let yeah. it be. And regardless of how long it's been, it doesn't mean, you know, we have this narrative that, oh my goodness, it's been 15 years. I shouldn't be feeling like this. Yes, I should. <laughs> you know? I love it. I love yeah. it that you yes, say I that. Should. And I'm going down. Now I'm going down. You know, yeah. I, I have my grandson living with me. And the other day I woke up feeling really scratchy and irritable. And I didn't know why. I couldn't work out why. Why am I feeling like this? What, what's happening? And I started ever analyzing. And eventually I just said to Brendan, I'm scratchy and irritable today. If I yell and I scream, it's not you, okay? It's me. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> acceptance. Acceptance and realizing, having the insight that, okay, today is going to be a weird day. Yeah. And you, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh -huh. If just more of us could just develop that degree of of emotional intelligence. And uh, yeah, and this is this is my this is my absolute mission. I mm. feel as though I'm on a mission now to help the world heal one grief person at a time. <laughs> you know, let's, and, let's shine the light. Let, let's create that 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 emotional intelligence where it's like, oh, okay, this is, let's get I always say let's let's pull the curtains open and see what life really is. I love that. Mm -hmm. Guys, look down there into the description of the YouTube video and of the podcast because you find all of Denise's uh, links down there. It is an amazing interview I've had today. Um, it was very raw for me because I guess there is a lot of grief that recently happened and grief maybe that was buried in the past that I had not dealt with. So... But then again, it is only by connecting with you and by talking openly about such issues that we can actually address them. Once you can name the beast, you can tame the beast. Yes. Um, and we often don't want to name it. We often want to run away from it. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I'm grateful that I've got uh, the opportunity, the privilege to, to have wonderful guests like you who make me think, who make me feel, who make me experience laughter, joy, sorrow, sadness, guilt, shame, the whole kaleidoscope of emotions. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, you are a wonderful woman. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much for being a guest on my show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on your show today. It's been an absolute privilege and my pleasure. Cool. And you guys out there, come on. There is hope here. There is help. Uh, wherever you are, whatever darkness you are in, do not give up. And, you know, look after yourself and, and live with passion. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I never give up. I never give up. I never give up. Turn around.